Well, here we have the <laughs> new and improved or old and disheveled, eh, whatever you want to call it. I'll call it the thin. I just got my seat pad there for the seat in the back. Bud's little fold up kibble bowl or water bowl, whichever. Bud's life jacket. Big folded up tarp to act as a bed for Bud. Bud's buddy. And my extra propulsion, just in case that propulsion stops working. It's a seagull. Shouldn't ever stop working. Unless you run out of gas. What? Anyways. These are the outriggers. The pontoons are uh, bumpers or fenders from uh, a boat for when a boat's docking up. The arms for the uh, outriggers are the uh, roof uh, the roof uh, poles and arch poles for the uh, a bimini bikini roof for a cruiser boat? Kind of a you know, rag top kind of dealy going on. And so they made fantastic, very strong mounts for the outriggers. The screen on top of the uh, arms there, that's to keep water from the outriggers from splashing up into the canoe, which it did quite frequently before I put the screen on. To the order of a hmm, gallon every few minutes, a lot of water came in without the screen. Very nice comfortable seat. And beside the seat there is Big long arm, and that is a boom arm for this camera that I'm recording with right now. All right, loosen enough this toggle here, and I can rotate the boom off to the side if I want to record myself from the side. I'm going past something interesting, perhaps, and I can put the boom straight forward which has the camera recording behind. Or I can have the boom straight behind, which is how I normally have it. And that way, the boom records, or the camera records everything that's happening forward, including the back of my head. Yeah, yeah. And of course, here's the glorious 1977 British Seagull 40 Plus Mark II in fantastically phenomenal condition. Wonderful little engine. It's called a three horsepower, but I don't think so. More like one and a half, maybe two. But still, she pushes quite well, enough to get the spray off the bow of the canoe. And spray off of the pontoons. So there we have it. The thing. And the thing on the thing. The seagull. Wonderful, wonderful little engine. Six hours at probably 10 miles per hour with that little one gallon tank. It's fantastic. The new mount that I put on the canoe for the seagull, I had a mount on the stern but it was too far back and incredibly uncomfortable to start the motor and change the, uh, the throttle. 
So I did this. It's a couple pieces of extremely heavy conduit that uh, I joined together with an industrial heavy duty conduit elbow and with a little bit of MacGyver and drilled a couple new holes and was able to bolt on the upward mounting plate incredibly robustly. It's going nowhere. The brackets, I made it of some heavy gauge aluminum, and bent and shaped and rebent and reshaped and cut and ground and reshaped some more and pulled and twisted. <laughs> it was a interesting struggle to get these to actually fit. Because as you can see, they're not quite straight. A bit of an angle, it's not 90 degrees. So when I bent them originally, I bent them so that they would fit on a 90 degree angled you know, bracket. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. I forgot that the canoe is curved. Not straight, but curved. So I had to do a little bit of adjustment. Oh well, it works. It's incredibly tight. Nothing wiggles or rattles. It moves even a millimeter. So I'm happy with it. Still have to put in a couple more screws in that one. A couple more screws in that one. Self-tapping uh, metal screws. The big ones are bolts to go all the way through to nuts on the other side. And I'm thinking that I might put some more wood and fill in the rest of this area here. And cover it over with a little bit more of that mesh. It's like a perfect little uh, tool pocket. I'd always know where the stuff was. <laughs> There we go. The thing. It's ugly. Weighs without the motor, damn near a hundred pounds, if not more than a hundred pounds. But with that little outboard. It goes like snot. Yeah. For a canoe. I'm happy with it. Cheers.